Good evening everybody, welcome to Divine Lady Design Studio. My name's Nicole and this is Beck and Beck's in her dressing gown. <laughs> and this is our Friday night craft along. It's our first one. Um, for those that are new here, uh, we're going to be doing this every couple of weeks or so and we're just yep. going to work on some projects that um, we're playing around with in our crafting studio. So basically we are working on uh, Kiki the Koala tonight because Bex wa wanted to make this so um, that's what we're going to be working on and if you caught our live stream earlier we uh, explained sort of what we were going to be doing so we are just sort of still getting set up and whatnot and we have our drinks in hand so we have our little uh what's it say she had a cocktail in her hand and confetti in her hair so yeah <laughs> that's what we've got going and you can see we had a bit of a play around this afternoon and we decorated the um behind the scenes and the background. we yeah the background behind the scenes so um we got some fairy lights to put up we got our new like and you would have noticed that we now have the word subscribe the full word the full word because we only had sub before we had to get some more letters in and yeah so we've just got that we changed it up a little bit and put a background there just to make it a little bit um yeah a little bit more crafty looking instead of just a um blank wall so yeah. i mean there wasn't a blank wall before but we've just put up our finish it friday as well so we're um pretty happy with that and we got a comment over on um instagram i shared it over on instagram and um the lady uh i think her name is Gemma from Tied with a Ribbon, she commented on it. She actually really liked it. So that was pretty cool. That's pretty special. That was pretty exciting. Yeah, it is. That's pretty <laughs> exciting when the designers comment on your, um, I mean, I did tag her and all the rest of it, but you know, hey, at least she commented yeah. and that was nice. So she thought it was very cute. And um, <laughs> I wondered what the sub was <laughs> on the finish of Friday. Yeah, you know, we just were hoping that you'd send us subways or something like that, you know. Yeah, we like so, subway. <laughs> um, we will have the kids periodically come in and out. I have, I think, Mia's coming out now. <laughs> Little M came home from school. Say hello, everybody. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Say, I'm feeling better now. I'm feeling better. Yeah. Because they know that you were sick. All right, you go inside. I better. You're it's better. Yes, you're you are. Better. All righty. <laughs> so it should periodically uh, make a bit of an appearance and um, forget to shut the door and let all the heat out. Can you shut the door, please, Neralee? <laughs> Neralee, come out going, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is normally our Friday night. So, um, yeah, we just sort of hang out in the craft room and do stupid stuff and have our say little... Stupid yeah, say have stupid things. Yeah, say stupid things. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we do because we get merry with our drinks. Yes, we're already and, started. Um, yeah, and I, I think Beck's already tipsy just from sniffing it because it's pretty strong. I actually added more into a little bit more tequila into mine, and so yeah, so I should be <clears throat> cheering in no time at all. So basically, what we've done this afternoon, we did a little bit of prep before we got started. Um, so Beck, well, oh, actually, I did, I did this, and Beck did some prep work. So. We sort of, yeah, so we've got all that. <laughs> got all my pieces. How many pieces are there for the koala? 29? There's 29 pieces to, I think, maybe more to the koala. So there's a fair few pieces to this one. Um, the wombat in the series has the least amount of, um, of pieces. pieces? Yes. And I do have to say that this is not sponsored by Monica Pool at all. Hi, Margie. Or Pool, um, Pat, Pat and Pool. Um, it's not sponsored by them no. at all. This is just something that we want to do because yeah. Beck and I want to actually do the whole series like what we've done with the cockatoo behind me. So um, we're not sponsored at all. This is just something that we do in our craft room. Yeah. Um, as you can see, it's my hair is a little bit, you know, a little bit messy by the end of the day, and I'm a little bit haggard and all the rest of it. Come so on, your hair still looks good. Yeah, I know because I've got a ton of lacquer in it. Yeah, <laughs> lacquer. Gotta love it. <laughs> I went home and had a rest. Yeah, so I, I had to just. Scoop it all back. Yeah, and I had a bit of a cat nap. Well, actually, I wasn't meaning to have a cat nap. I just laid down to stretch out my back, and I fell asleep. Woke up like half an hour later. I'm like, oh, okay, I needed Obviously a sleep. You needed it. Yeah. yeah. So, um, basically, we've had a few questions about the applique and how we transfer it over without the pieces moving and stuff like that. So, once we're finished talking here and having a little bit of a chat and um, saying hello to everybody. And um, listening to the kids squeal in the background, and you'll probably get to hear my lovely neighbours as well, because they they're starting to rev up too yeah, for a Friday are. night. I've already heard them. Too. Yeah, they already. They get pretty <laughs> hectic on a Friday night too. So, um, yeah, like 
on a whole, I have really good neighbours. The ones across the road, they're okay. But every now and again, they do rev up a little bit and they get a little bit loud. But, you know, it's only every now and again, so we don't really worry about it. Yeah. So yeah. basically what we've got to do, we've start, um, Becca stuck all the fabric down. We've got to cut out all the pieces. But then when it comes time to it, we're actually going to show you um, how to stick it all down. Hey, Carol. Oh, my God. Carol, you're awake. It's 2 a.m. where you are. Oh, oh my, my goodness. Hello, Carol. Thank you for joining us. We <laughs> That's really are awesome. That is awesome because we that know is... what time it is. Thank you so much for interrupting your sleep and joining us. That is absolutely wicked. <laughs> so oh, dedicated. <laughs> dedicated. Yes, absolutely. you are. Absolutely. You are. You are a dedicated person for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. I hope we don't put you to sleep then. We shouldn't. <laughs> We're pretty. No, yeah, I don't no we'll sleep. be fine. <laughs> So Thank obviously so. we're feeling a little bit better than what we were this morning. Oh, yeah. We were we were, we were quite flat. flat this morning, <laughs> and we do apologise for that. We probably shouldn't have went live, but we we still wanted to um, come Thanks. on and say hi and all the rest of it. And we were a little bit flat. We had a huge day yesterday. Yep. Um, but that's yeah. our dedication. Yeah, we're dedicated too. So. See? Yeah, so basically um, we're, we're feeling a little bit more recharged now. We're a little bit more relaxed. Definitely. My husband's just pulled up as well. Evening, Paula. How are you? Hope you've got your cuppa in hand. Um, so we're going to um, start cutting out all the shapes and all that sort of stuff and just have a bit of a chit-chat with you. So if you've got any... Um, okay, I know that you're not a robot, Red. Um, anyway, my husband will probably throw in random things tonight as well. He generally does that when we're um, sitting here and, and all the rest of it. So if you've got any questions about applique or anything like that. Now, I'm no expert by anybody's means, but I do know how to, um, you know, a few tips and tricks and stuff like that to get you out of a sticky situation. <laughs> Pardon the pun. But anyway, <laughs> didn't even realize I said it until after I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I think her drink's gone to her head already. I've only had a sip, so I don't think so. That's it has you. to be worse than me then. <laughs> no, you sniffed yours. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so anyway, I just figured that what we'll do is we'll just work through the process. Um, we're just cutting out all the pieces at the moment, and then what we'll do is we'll put the layout sheet down and we'll show you how we uh, stick everything into place. Um, it's super easy to do, and, um, yeah, like... One point is with the cutting out. Yep. Um, you cut out on the outside of the line, mm -hmm. not on the line. Isn't that the trick that you, the tip, one of the tips you said? Uh, yeah. So yes. I. You, so yeah. So you can see there that Beck is cutting. Get it to focus. focusing. Hang on, we'll just get it to focus. There we go. There we go. So you can see there that Beck is actually cutting on the outside of the line. Um, if you cut on the line, it doesn't matter. But yeah, you just cut on the outside of the line. So I've cut mine out and you can actually see the black line that, well, not really, but you can sort of see the black line there. So um, you cut on the outside of the line and that just gives you um, a little bit, it doesn't make the pieces too small, then they'll all fit together. Um, so yeah, so basically what we do is we trace out our pieces. So like so, we've traced out our pieces and we put it on a bigger piece of fabric. Okay, because then it makes it super easy to cut out the shapes. So you can see there I've cut on the outside of the line and now I've cut out the shape. So we go from this to this. And why we do that, it is a lot easier to iron your piece of um, fusible web onto your fabric as opposed to trying to cut this shape and then put it onto fusible web. Okay, so that's why we do it like that. And, you know, everybody's got their own tips and tricks of, of the way they do um, applique, but this is just how I do it. This is how I've taught Beck to do it, and yep. this is how I taught everybody um, up at the, the bunyas to do it. And yeah, so, some of them had already done applique, so they knew what they were doing. Um, others hadn't, so Beck and I went around and just explained to them how to do it. Um, is a drip under pressure? Is a drip under pressure? What is... I don't Hello. know. How are you? He's the, he's the expert That's himself. Right. Right. So <laughs> Brendan Brendan has just got home from a hard day work of filming. His camera bag is upside down, which is not a good look. And he has food and he's running the gauntlet again because he had KFC last night. And he's having it again tonight. Different oh. shop. It's a different shop. Yeah, though. that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. See you later. See ya. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so 
he's on kitty duty now <laughs> and we're off the clock. So yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it. That's so it. basically that's what we do. We trace out the pieces um, from the from the um, template pieces. And if you can show me Which the page. Are here. So you get two. I have to bring it back a bit. Yep. So you get two two sheets of paper into in the patterns, um, and the link for the patterns are underneath this video. If anybody's chasing them, and you can always come back and we can and you can go through it. And this is going to go over a couple of weeks, so we're going to do as much as we can tonight in about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours, and just cruise along. Um, and then on the 21st we'll finish it off, so putting the border and everything, so it looks like the cockatoo behind us. So you have one that it says applique shapes. Okay, so that's what the shapes that you've got to um, trace out. And you can just trace it onto your um, fusible web just as it is if you wanted to because there is a space between um, all the pieces. So that makes it super easy with these patterns. Whereas some other patterns you get, you actually have to space it out yourself. So this one's super easy. You can just put your... Um, and it makes it very economical as well, I found too. So you didn't have to use as much... Um, fusible web as the pattern suggested so that was a good thing as well and then when it comes time to putting it onto your um, onto your background fabric you've got your layout sheet so and we'll show you how we use our layout sheet and what we do with that and how we get everything to it here because a few people actually asked how we did that as well so yeah yeah so basically that's all we're going to be really doing at the moment so if you've got any questions at all um, so I use Heat and Bond um, Margie. So um, the brand is Pellon, I think it is. Where is it, hon? Do you know where it is? I will grab it. Yep. I'm just looking for the... No, the brand is Heat and Bond. Yep. Yes. So this is what this is the one I use. We have this on our website. Now this is the um, medium weight fusible um, Vlicefix Heat and Bond um, fusible web. It goes by... a fair a few different names mm -hmm. um heat and bond is the brand fusible web is the product um so yeah so basically this one doesn't need any steam it is machine washable it's my favorite brand i must admit this is the one that i use all the time yes. i never have any problems with it no. i've had violin glycifix and stuff like that and i just can't get the stuff to stick half the time i can if i buy it and i come home and use it straight away it'll stick straight away but if I've had it stored even if I've had it in a dust proof um, bag or something like that I just can't get it to stick and I think we've used some you and I have used some earlier on in the piece yes. and we had lots of problems lot yeah there. it just would not stick like no no it wouldn't so this is sorry I'm meant to say that this is heat and bond light um, and then there's a, a featherweight one a feather light and then there's a ultra and the ultra comes in a red bag and the feather light one comes in a light blue bag. So I always use the purple one. It's the, the go-to one for me. If I was doing something on a t-shirt or something like that that didn't need to be sewn down, I'd use the ultra because I find that that sticks really well for t-shirts, for applique and stuff like that. Not that I do a lot of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you know, you know what an expert is in what? Yeah, that's right, it does. It comes away from the backing, and that's really prevalent with um, Vlicefix. I have found that um, with the Vlicefix one, it basically just, yeah, it just does, after a, even a month of sitting in a dust-free bag, out of sunlight, in a dark mm -hmm. cupboard, it still just starts to come away, it, like it just lifts off the paper. Um, so I've just I've just sort of stayed away from it, and I just use the um, Heat and Bond brand. I can't say m more than anything. This is the best product on the market. Like I absolutely love it, and I've used all their their products. So whether it be the Featherlight, the Light, or the Ultra, um, my daughter actually made a applique quilt. It had a garden scene on it, and um, to put the Ultra to the test. So basically, all we did was stuck it down, and then I quilted around it. There was a couple of spots that I quilted over it, just done a stipple and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, and basically it's still going. It's still getting around. Yeah. It's in the cupboard. It gets chucked in the washing machine. Uh, she made it for Nera Lee when she was like three or four years old. 
Oh, um, so wow. Nera Lee's now 12 and that's still around and the applique still hasn't come off. And it's been washed in the washing machine, really no care whatsoever because it's, it was owned by a little kid that dragged it everywhere. Yeah. Because she loved it and just dragged it everywhere. So <laughs> um, I'm going to try that one off one off you soon yeah i would paula oh, if you're man. getting into applique or anything like that i definitely would um actually give it a go like you will be really surprised at it so um yeah I, i'll have to keep looking at the computer because it seems that the um chat on my phone is actually stuck and um isn't progressing along oh hey elizabeth how are you so glad that you could make it um, for those that don't know, Elizabeth Sawyer is in our Facebook group and always misses out on the live um, streams because it's usually 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the morning for her over in the UK. So she was actually able to join us tonight, which is absolutely fabulous. Awesome. And we hope that we get a few more people from the UK coming along and joining in the fun as well. So, um, yeah, the um, I, I definitely would give that um, Heat and Bond a go. It is a really good brand. And um, as I said, I never have any problem. You have that's what I use. Yeah, that. yeah. That's the. Um, I don't think you can see no. that. I'll just lift that up a bit. So that um, one up there, cut. Um, cut so press and repeat. repeat. Um, it was all done with the heat and bond, and that's just um, raw edge applique. That one's just got some straight um, stitching on it. Has it? Yes, it has. Yes. yes. Yep. Is that the one you did too? Yes. Yeah, I did all that. Yeah, you did all that. That's right. I just put the binding on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah, that was another Beck special up there. Well, that's another collaboration between the two of us up there. And I think that's a Tied with a Ribbon as well. Yes. It is. It is. Yes. yes. So we're featuring Tied with a Ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Yes, it is. That's what you used up at the uh, Bunyas, Catherine. We definitely used that because I wouldn't, I wouldn't actually put anything else but that because... Right. Uh, especially, especially into um, a retreat situation. So, Carol, yes, you do have to trace the pattern pieces onto your heat and bond. Um, the heat and bond actually um, has one side, and I don't know whether we'll be able to pick this up on camera or not, but see that shiny side? That's the glue. Yep, you can sort of see yeah, it. Yeah, you can sort of see it. And then you've got a paper side. So what we do is we just trace this, we put the glue side down onto our uh, light board. And then we put our template piece um, paper underneath and then we just trace the pieces onto it and then we cut them out. So um, once we we iron them onto the um, fabric, so and it's really hard to tell with um, Batik which is the right side and which is the wrong side. So these are our pieces here. So you can see here that's got the glue on one side, it's a little bit rough and shiny and we've just traced that out. So we're once we're finished cutting out, we're going to actually show you how to adhere um the fabric to this and how long you have to hold it for with this particular product and then again we'll cut that out and then we'll start laying out our things so we, we sort of ran a little bit behind schedule yes yeah, so we use the the applique shapes straight on top of that underneath yeah and then the heat and bond on top and then i just traced all the shapes out yeah and that's and that's how we always do it um and that's why we like this product too because even when you've handled it it still works really well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, that one actually sat there for, because we did that. Did you only do that this year? Yeah. So that sat there for over twelve months. Yeah. And it didn't even come away. No. No. Before. Yeah, because it, it was the, not Christmas just gone. The Christmas yeah, it was before. Yeah, Christmas before that um, I did it all. Yeah, because that was going to be a class sample, and um, I, we didn't end up running it as a class sample, so it ended up in my um. UFO box and a finish it Friday instead. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so basically that sat there for over 12 months because I think we only did that um, in February. Yeah, it wasn't. February, Mar beginning of March maybe? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, round about. Yeah. So it, it was over 12 months that it sat there. So, yeah. Um, hey, Biz, how you going? Using Batik would be advised in case you make a mistake. Yes. So I, with a lot of my beginners um, in applique classes in the past and, and whatnot, I've always suggested that they use a Batik. Batik's not my favorite fabric to work with. Um, 
but in certain situations it's a, like foundation paper piecing I always recommend that if you've never done anything like that before start with homespun because you can't tell the difference no so if you make a mistake and and Beck knows this she goes I can't tell the difference like no. um, so it's really good for beginners to get the feel of it and it, um, they don't have that pressure of having to get it absolutely mm. right I mean there is in some homespuns you can actually tell the difference but with on a whole the the homespun that I use well it's not a homespun it's actually a um, a quilter's muslin and it's called Emma Louise and it's a very soft pretty fabric yeah it is um it, it can be used nice. for used for clothing and stuff like that and it just um washes up really soft and nice and it feels nice against the skin uh, it's a better quality um plain fabric so not cheap it is twelve dollars a meter so it's not cheap like your home spuns or anything like that but but it's worth it's it. well worth it's it i love definitely. it in my quilts and i love using it for little shorts and stuff like that for the kids i've in the past i've done that made yeah. shorts for them and stuff um so they really like that so um, yeah, so basically, that's what I sort of tell people. If you've never done something like this before, go for a batik or go for a plain fabric because at least then you can get used to the technique and stuff like that and that you don't have that added pressure of um, making a mistake or putting the fabric the wrong way or yep. having to waste fabric because you've put the, the applique uh, fusible web onto the wrong side. So that's another reason why we're liking these ones because they are the batik and we don't have to think too much. <laughs> no. So yeah, <coughs> quilters cotton, yeah. Um, it's actually even, I think it's even nicer than um, Kona. You probably haven't felt, no, know. you wouldn't know what Kona is because I don't get it in. No. Um, Kona has like a, a massive um range of like plain fabrics that's oh, a cotton okay. yeah um so yeah so basically it's um really really nice so ah oh, shell's here too from new zealand gee we've got a global thing <laughs> happening today this is awesome so that welcome everybody so if you've just joined us welcome to our first craft along it's a very informal chat. I'll probably end up with the hiccup soon. I'm having a little bit of a, a drink for a Friday afternoon or Friday evening. Friday evening. Yes. Beck's having a little bit of um, Kentucky Fried Chicken and uh, a little drink as well and cutting out some shapes. And I'm just looking for a bigger pair of scissors so I can help her. Um, and we're just discussing, as you would have heard, we're just discussing the uh, heat and bond that I like to use um, and why I like to use it. So. Uh, Kath asked if I used it up at the retreat for the um, flower basket uh, thing and yes I did because it's the only brand that I use. I many many years ago used to have flies to fix in because that's what we had at the shop that I got my training at and when I found Heat and Bond I never went back to flies to fix. While Violene has some wonderful products, flies to fix is not one of them. So yeah, so basically that's what we're doing. So. We are just cutting all our pieces out, and if you've got any more questions, um, I like Kona, but Moda or Michael Miller is preferred by me. Yeah, well, this this one is um, a Japanese company makes the Emma Louise one. It's absolutely beautiful. I'll um, send you over a sample, uh, Carol. So just remind me because I might forget by the end of the night. But um, we do have our notebook there. I'll send you over a sample of it and um, you can have a feel of it because you may not have come across it. Um, I'm not sure if it's sold in the United States or not, but I get it here from one of my suppliers. So um, brilliant product. Absolutely love it. And I've been using it. The colors are quite vibrant too because I've been using it with um, uh, the block of the month. Yeah, I was just going to say yeah. that. That's yeah. what you've used for that. Yeah. yeah, so I've used it for the block of the month. Um, Last year I used uh, Grunge by Basic Grey and this year I'm just using the Emma Louise and I also used it in a mini quilt that uh, went horribly wrong because my machine broke down and then I went on to my vintage machine and my vintage machine pretty much loved it that much, tried to eat it. So <laughs> um, yeah, things didn't go to plan with that so I'm in the process of um, reworking that so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> So basically what I'm going to do, um, and it's just over there if you want to just grab it out. I think I've already pulled it apart. Yep. Um, that one's going to get lost because <laughs> it's so small. I so know. We have tiny, li I think I, tiny little pieces. I think I've cut it wrong. Why? What is it? It's part of the eye. 
No, I you haven't cut it wrong. No, that's, yeah, it sits underneath. I was meant to do the full part. Oh, yeah, that's all right. We can work with that. But I thought, she'll be all right. It should be right, mate. <laughs> should be all right. <laughs> Every now and again, a little bit of Aussie comes out. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of bogan. <laughs> So these are the colors that I used for the mini quilt. So this is the uh, Emma Louise that I was talking about. So you can see there that, the, I don't know what happened to the green, but the green's gone missing. Oh, no. No, it's, it's not. gone missing. Oh, no, I used it for something else. That's right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've got it on a bolt. But they're the colors. Like, they're beautiful colors. They're, that's the um, soft um, range, like the soft colors that you get, like the pastel colors. And there's even lighter again than the pink and even lighter again in the blue and... Um, in the purple the white comes in like an off-white and then a snow white and that is the snow white that is there um and it comes in pastel greens and all the rest of it just like any um plain one but see this is the coloring that i'm talking about so you can see there it's gone horribly wrong my points didn't um join up and yeah i'm almost embarrassed to show it but you know hey even i make mistakes so this is a mini quilt pattern that i will be releasing soon um i've just got to figure out how to fix it so I'm thinking that I'm actually going to pull it apart and one of our craft alongs at, um, will be doing some American piecing. So an American piecing is just hand sewing it um, using a quarter inch and using like, um, like a back stitch, I suppose it is. Like when it just, yeah, you're just sewing it together. And so I'll probably do that by hand and just show you a little demo of that. So um, that'll, that'll really work. Um, <laughs> lovely, can't see your mistakes. Oh yeah, you can. <laughs> Can. <laughs> oh yeah you can oh i will show you the mistakes and you know what i'm not embarrassed to say that i've made mistakes because you know what i'm not an expert i'm just like you guys but i just like sharing my knowledge with you i've never claimed to be an expert no um i break every rule every rule known <laughs> to man i will break because there is no rule book and we met a lady that was a kindred spirit yesterday. Absolutely. Yeah. I loved her. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what happened was I was using my Singer Quantum um, L500 and it started to have bobbin issues and wouldn't stitch anymore. So I, and I, I was under the pump for this and I, and I needed to get it out. I should have just stopped and put up a notice that the mini quilt wasn't coming out um, because I went onto my vintage machine, which is a 1951 uh, 20K, a 201k singer um, machine and while she is a gorgeous machine to make bags and stuff like that oh, yes. uh, using the Emma Louise and the finer cottons in life no 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 learned that lesson didn't no, you no no <laughs> no we don't do that Nicole you just stop sewing well biz reckons have another drink or two and then you won't see the mistakes well yeah there's that there's that too <laughs> so like you can see here like I just could not get so this block over here, um, can you just hold that there for I a second? I can hold that. Yep. So this, where is it? This block here was done on the Singer Quantum. These blocks here, these three blocks here, were done on the Vintage Machine. So you can see that even though, and this is really key, ladies and gentlemen, if there's any gentlemen joining us, it's really key. If you start doing something on one machine, stick with that machine because not all quarter inch feet are um, the same. And I thought that I measured my scant quarter inch correctly because my Singer Quantum comes with a scant quarter inch foot so I don't have to measure it. And then I thought I measured it correctly and it turns out that I didn't. So you can see here, I started to lose points and stuff like that. So that's why I'm not happy with it. So what I'm going to do is instead of just chucking this in the naughty corner and quilting it up and leaving it how it is, which I would do if I wanted to, I'm not going to actually do that. I'm actually going to separate the blocks and then I'll be able to actually sew this together and all my points won't get lost because the simple fact is I'll be hand sewing it so I can manipulate it a bit more and it won't become wavy or anything like that. Whereas as it stands at the moment, it's not good enough to put out as a pattern. It's not good enough to photograph for the front of the pattern. It, regardless of whether it's a free pattern or not, it's not meeting my standards for that sort of thing. So I thought, well, instead of just chucking it in the naughty corner and starting all over again, I'll pull it apart, pull the bo blocks apart, and then basically put it back together, but do it hand sewing and turn it into a, um, a little tutorial for you guys. 
Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Worked for me. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, it is very beautiful. I love the colors in it. Like, I, I'm not disputing that it, it's beautiful. I love the colors. I love the pattern. Oh. I think the pattern is actually over there, isn't it? You can see it a bit better, probably. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I love the pattern that I've come up with the design. I really enjoyed making it. I just was a little bit disappointed. It's not there. Okay. It was sitting there with it, so I don't know where it is. Um, yeah, so I was just a little bit disappointed that the um, the vintage machine was just that little bit too aggressive. <laughs> a bit naughty. Yeah, it was just a little bit aggressive. So, but that's okay. These things happen. You live and learn. That's that's all that matters. So yeah. So what is everybody else up to tonight? Stole my scissors. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I stole the scissors. Mind you, they're my scissors. They're my good scissors. <laughs> they're my good I'm allowed scissors. to use them tonight. <laughs> I'm very privileged. Oh, bite me! <laughs> oh my god. She makes me out to be an ogre over scissors. I swear. I am. All right. I'll admit that. She is. Yeah. You should hear. Don't touch my scissors. <laughs> Not those ones. You're never allowed to use those ones. I've never said never. I d I've said just don't use my scissors. No, these ones? When you first got them. Oh, yeah. Don't. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't used them. That's why. <laughs> Who else is with me with scissors? They've got to be nice and sharp. And do you like sharing your scissors? Put a comment in, in, in the comments and tell me if you like sharing your scissors or not. Or if you're a bit weird like me and go, no, you can't touch my scissors. Hey, it used to I be have worse. To agree. I would I It used to be worse. You couldn't touch my pens. I wouldn't allow people to touch my pens. Yeah, so I've got better. Oh it's just God. scissors now. Oh, lucky me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do me. Oh gosh. So we've got nearly everything cut out. And we've got like these are his little eyes. <laughs> Look how tiny they are. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got little eyes and we've got all these belly pieces and stuff like that. So we were gonna um just do this all in blue, but we've incorporated um because we're actually making two of each. So we're gonna make another um cockatoo Cockatoo? out of the same fabric and we're gonna make another koala out of the same fabric we're using tonight because we both want to set so yep. we're doing this as a joint um thing we won't be doing this every friday night we'll probably do you know every couple It'll of months we'll do one while. yeah there's what 12 in the set now i think yeah it's, yeah, it's on the back yeah yes there's, there's 12 in the set so for those that haven't seen the the full set that's all the animals that um are in it so you can see there so there's a frog a possum a wombat um, there's all sorts of, you know, wonderful little things in there. Uh, there's a platypus, the animal that doesn't know what sort of animal it is. That's what I call the platypus. Because it's a, well, it's, it's a mammal, but it's also a marsupial. Yes, I think so. Yes. So, yeah. Um, yes, so they are all the... it lays the, eggs. Yeah, it lays eggs. It has a duck bill and it also has venom. Yes. It's, um, yeah, another animal that's poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I do share my good, not best scissors, um, but them sharp and frequently keep away from my Kai scissors. Yeah, see, they're Kai scissors. That's right, Carol. They are Kai scissors. So these <laughs> are the 7170 series. They're awesome. They just feel awesome. I know. I'm really enjoying yeah. using them. Yeah, $70 and you can have a set too. <laughs> I'll save up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I got the set that was going through Mass Drop, I think it's called. Yeah, I think that's what you got it through. Yeah, yeah. and it came with these little ones, um, and it came with that set there, and they're awesome. I just love them. My Kai scissors are mine. I agree. <laughs> that's and she should think she's self lucky because she's I using them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we give each other heaps. <laughs> and you know what's even funnier? You'll say something to Beck and she'll get defensive. You ready? <laughs> and then I'll and I'll laugh and she'll go, Oh you shit, you got me again. <laughs> I get it all the time. I go fishing all the time with Beck. Yeah. <laughs> she catches me quite often. Yeah, and I catch her quite often. So yeah. <laughs> so um so what is everybody working on today? Is anyone doing applique, applique with us? Yes, is anybody doing any applique with us tonight? I know Elizabeth's not because hers are on the way to um, somewhere else. <laughs> they're getting, they're actually getting delivered here in Australia and then they're getting flown back by her friend in July. Is your friend coming over in July? 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Just save some postage because it was going to be a bit expensive for postage. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's... That's it, eh? That's smart thinking. So, I know for Biz, it's about 6 o'clock in the morning. And for other people, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. And I don't know what's wrong with my phone. Not much. Cooking dinner for hubby and watching the girls. Um, I've been trying to see the bags behind you. Okay, so I'll the bags... That yep, that's me as well. The bags behind me are... The, this one here is the um, Dee Dee's Mountain Retreat bag. And that is the one that we're doing at the... We're doing this again at the November Retreat. Then we've got the Dee Dee's Mini Bag, Mountain Retreat bag. Um, and that one is also getting done at the November Retreat and will be available to purchase as a pattern after that. Um, I am looking at doing these as uh, video courses um as well but that probably won't be until the new year uh, i want to get my new computer and um all that sort of stuff first before i i do that just to make sure that i've got good quality ones before i sell that sort of stuff and then um for those that don't know this is the shabby fabrics accordion pouch and on our channel we actually have a um how to do the hacks on this to make it a really nice clean simple sew and you don't have to do any hand stitching of closing um, up turned through gaps or anything like that so you'll be able to find that um, after tonight if I remember I'll put that a link down below as well for that and then we have another one that we did at our retreat which this is um, by Love Me Patterns uh, the lovely Mel came and uh, did a demonstration on how to do this and we all made this at the March retreat was it Beck? Yes it was. Yep the March retreat we did this one and I'll open that up for you and you can see inside so it's got um, slots for 12 cards and you can actually it's got a magnetic snap to hold them all in place it's got a coin purse and then it's also got another um, spot for your cards as well it's also got a spot for your cash uh, it's got two of those and one for receipts so yeah and then it's got this lovely little um hardware that we've put on there um and that's optional you don't actually have to put that on and it works with invisible um magnetic um closures so you can't actually see the closure so yeah that's called the lorna wallet and it's by love me patterns and you'll find that um you'll find her on facebook and i think she's got a page there with where you can get um the pattern from i think she's got a is it Payhip website? I'm not sure. I don't know. I will okay. find the information. I'll put it underneath this video. This one here, the black one, this is the uh, Monica Pool bag as well. Um, this is the Adventurer bag. And this is the one that we just recently done at our May uh, retreat. And we actually have these patterns for sale over on our website. So we've got about 10 in stock at the moment, 8 to 10 in stock. Um, really easy make there is quite a few steps there's 24 steps to it but a super easy easy make like and um, if you've got any questions or you need to know how to put it together if you do choose to make one uh, just let me know and um, I can help you out because I taught 10 no eight eight new bag makers how to make that yes we yeah. had 13 in the class, class. all together yep yeah. and um, yeah we had eight that were absolute beginners so yeah that, yeah that had never made never a made a bag before so yeah whatsoever. so what are we up to Beck? um i've just got these two little pieces to do and then we're up to showing everyone how to all right okay so apply. in a minute we're once we're finished cutting out all these little pieces we're actually going to tilt the camera down <clears throat> and we're going to show you uh, what we're going to do next like how you put the um fabric on and all the rest of it you girls are amazing so quick i need to work out how to get to your retreats <laughs> you are in queensland okay so we're we're yes we are in queensland we are in the southeast corner of queensland so we're in a town called kingaroy which is about three hours to three and a half hours depending on traffic from brisbane i was going to say two and a half to three yeah well two is three and a half hours Alice from Ipswich it's two and a half yeah 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 so yeah we're about three hours from um sort of northwest from Brisbane uh if you want to come to one of our retreats and you're coming from interstate whether it be 
we've had people come from um, Cairns. We've had people come up from um, Canberra. Canberra. We've had people come from South Australia, Australia. And the designer came from Northern Territory. So she ended up organising her own um, transport and, and whatnot. But the lady from uh, Canberra, we ended up organising for another retreater to meet her at the airport and bring her up. We have line machines for you and all that sort of stuff. So yep. if you do want to come to a retreat, it's well worth it. Just we'll We'll make sure that, you know, it'll either be someone that we've um, connected you with the, um, that's coming to the retreat and or my husband will come down and pick you up or even Beck may even come yeah. down and pick you up. We will sort something. Yeah, we will sort something no out. Um, I can't come, come down and pick you up because I've got to take all the, care of all the logistics up at the Bunya Mountains. Um, so yeah, so that, um, it's, it's always up to someone else to go down to the airport. But nine times out of ten, we can usually hook you up with There's another retreaty. who's coming yeah. from, that direct, yeah. from that area. Yeah, because we've had quite a few um, repeat, repeat clients come, um, who now we class as friends, by the way. They're not clients anymore. No. But um, we have part we have, of the family. They're part of the DD's family, that's right. And, um, yeah, they come up from that way all the time. So there'll be most definitely a situation where we can, um, yeah, we can um, get you up here. Oh, my husband reckons all roads lead to King Arroy. Yeah. <laughs> He's a truck driver, so he'd know. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, if you're liking this video and this just informal chat today and um, the crafting along and any tips and tricks that you're getting along the way, give us a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button as well, and that way you won't miss out on any of our um, live uploads or anything like that. Um, and for those that didn't join us earlier on... Um, we are looking at doing our weekly tutorials live so um we're pretty excited about that actually because the wednesday yeah on a wednesday because normally i upload a tutorial on a wednesday so um we're really looking forward to doing that now just something different yep yeah mixing it up spicing a little bit it up. spicing it up <laughs> all right so are you doing any bags tonight paula bowie Is that so, Catherine? Kingaroy right, is, is a, a suburb, suburb of Nanango. No, it's not. <laughs> I beg to differ. <laughs> Although we do frequent both because my husband's business is based in, in, even though it's called King of Toe, it's actually based in Nanango. And I grew up in Nanango. Yeah. You I were was born in Kingaroy. Yeah, never Lee was born in Kingaroy. I grew was up in Nanango. I was born in Sydney. <laughs> I'm a cockroach. <laughs> You should have heard Talon. You wouldn't have been wanted to be in our house on Wednesday night when State of Origin was on. Oh, really? Talon was going off. Ah, oh, I would have given these. <laughs> Go to blues! He's <laughs> like, ah, oh, those cockroaches. <laughs> so, all right, we should explain this. Um, we, uh, yeah, Paula was born in Wandai. Um, I'm editing a video on electric power steering setups tonight. You ladies will be excited, I bet. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, Brendan and I are actually, so for those that are new here and don't know who King of Toe Crew is that's commenting right now, um, that is my husband. <laughs> he has a channel that he's just started up and he's obviously listening to what's going on. Um, so yeah, so basically we are in competition at the moment on um, subscribers. Oh. And it is actually really close. I'm on 1,731 subscribers. So thank you to all my subscribers that are subscribing. It's all right. I felt it. <laughs> I have a, a sense for it. I do it all the time. Oh, no, but the open. I talk with my hands. She gets scared. Especially when I've got these in my hand open. So yeah, so I've got uh, 1,731 subscribers at the moment. Yesterday when we were driving down to the... Um, the, the Stitches and Craft Show. Stitches and Craft Show. He was on 1,712 and I was on 1,713. <laughs> there was one subscriber between us and I seem to have jumped ahead today. Um, for Tuesday, we got 38 subscribers on Tuesday, which is absolutely amazing. That was like, awesome. Thank you so much to all those new subscribers and welcome to the channel. And I hope I don't scare you off with our craziness. <laughs> this is the first time we've done this. Yeah, this is the first time. <laughs> so we apologize. 
It's not the first time we've gone live, but yeah. Alrighty, so that's all your pieces cut out? Yes, it yep. is. I'm going to just duck off and get us a rubbish bin. Oh, I've got my little rubbish bin over here. Yeah, I'll just go and grab another one. Okay then. Rightio. I have no idea what to say. So I'm just going to tidy up a bit. I've got three more pieces to cut out. I've got the belly and the two ears. So for the ears, I'm using this. And for his belly, I'm going to go with this one. Oh, I think that's going to look great. All right, we've got a bin. All right. <sighs> Tupperware container, bin. Right. Because <laughs> with applique, as you know, anybody that's done it, you get a lot of scraps. So you've got paper, you've got bits of fabric, you've got all sorts of stuff. So, um... What's he doing? Who? What's that channel, Red? <laughs> Is that his channel? Yeah, I think so. Okay, show it. Yeah. Let him have a little bit of... All right. What's this? There you go, guys. Subscribe and tell me what you're <laughs> doing. <laughs> what I'm doing? You know the drill. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's all about Brendan. Okay, so Paula's saying she loves your choice. Yeah, okay. I just showed him what I'm yep. doing. Yeah, awesome. The ears and the belly. Okay, so um, where are we up to now? We're up to ironing these on okay so we're going to tilt the camera and uh we'll, you'll still be able to see what's going on and you'll just hear our voices at this point so just bear with us for a second because we've only got the one camera as you all know and i'm just going to tilt that down and, and you'll see all our pieces yeah i hope i'm not making too many of you sick with the movement but yeah i just got to get this to move down just a tad more how's that Beck? Yep, that looks pretty good. Okay, yeah, we can see what's going on there. Awesome. All right, just straighten that up a little bit. Okay, we might put a little bit of extra light onto that. So, that'll work good. There we go. How's that looking? Yeah, that better? Oh, I forgot one. Better do this one. All right, so, here we go. You can see, we'll just move it over just a little bit so we're more in frame. Okay, there we go. All right, so you can see here that we've got all our pieces and they've still got all the numbers on the back. Um, let me know if you can see that clearly on your um, screens, lovelies. Okay, because we can see it clearly on our camera and from our computer we can see it okay. Yeah, red called out, yes. Oh, and uh, King of Toe from the Peanut Gallery has yelled at that. Yeah, it's good. So, alrighty. So basically... Um, you can see here, these are all the pieces that we've got. So we just need to now grab the ironing pad and we're going to fire up the iron and we're going to show you how we put our pieces onto our, um, onto our fabric just to make it super easy. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. It might be an idea just to move these out of the way. Yes. And at any time, just um, right at the... Yeah, yeah, I've got the, okay. the view here. Yeah, it's cool. Thanks. Looks good. Thanks, hon. As long as it's focused. It's focused, okay? Yeah. Yep, yep. Alrighty. So I'm just going to move all the pieces out of the way for now, and we're just going to bring up the ironing pad. That's going to echo through here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, King Atai crew. Alrighty, so we've just got this little ironing pad that we're going to use. That's covered in fluff. Now, you don't use any steam whatsoever with any sort of heat and bond or anything like that. It is a no steam product. I never use steam with it. I don't like using steam with it. Some people actually recommend that you do use steam. I have had more problems than not with it. So, we just basically, as I said, we're using Bartik. So you can see there, you cannot really tell the difference between the right side and the wrong side so it doesn't you're good really, to go you're good to go with Bartik and Beck's just going to show you what she does okay so I'm just going to place that on oh I forgot something what's that my Teflon yep so I've got them just pla place them down Okay, so the other thing that we like to use as well is a Teflon sheet. So 
You can get these at any um, patchwork shop. Um, you just go in and ask for an applique sheet or a Teflon sheet. And basically what this does is just protects your iron from any glue or anything like that. So um, we have the iron set to the hottest setting, um, which is cotton. Is it? Yeah. Yep, cotton. Um, and every iron's different. So if you find that your iron is really, really hot, just take it down a touch. Because you don't want it so hot that it's going to shrink anything down. So basically, um, if you're not using Bartiks, yes, you would iron it to the wrong side of the fabric. So, Like I've done with his yeah. nose. Yep. Yeah. So here you can see this is um, the nose and it's a normal fabric. So there, there definitely is a wrong side. And so this is the right side here and this is the wrong side. So you put your applique onto the wrong side. If you're new to it, um, any sort of applique, use a homespun or use Bartiks and then you won't have to stress about that at all. Alrighty, so we put our Teflon sheet down and we've got our pieces in place and you can see here that we're butting them up pretty close to one another and that's just going to save on fabric. And you can also see that we've actually made our applique um, paper a little bit bigger than the actual piece traced out. That just makes it super easy for when we're cutting out. We don't have to cut the shape of onto the fabric and then try and get it onto the applique paper. We put it onto the applique paper, put that onto the fabric and then cut it out and it's all done for you. And you can do that, um, like if you're not doing one of these patterns and you maybe have an Aki quilt cutter or a Cricut or you know one of those fabric cutters out there you can actually do this with, with that as well so you just put the applique paper the applique uh, fusible web down and then you just run it through your machine so i do that with my acu quilt cutter for flowers and stuff like that when i do applique oh, okay. for flowers and stuff i just um get my fabric whether it be five inch squares four inch squares whatever i'm getting and then i just um put the applique paper on there and then go through the machine and they're all cut out Okay, I'm just going to move these yep. out the way. Cool. Okay. So what I found today when I was doing it, I just counted just eight seconds. Yep. And it stuck pretty good. Whereas the longer one that I did, when I held it down longer, it started to peel off. Yep. And because I hadn't cut around the pattern piece, I had to, that's why some of them have got wonder clips. Just like this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So about eight seconds she holds it down for um, on a cotton setting. Sorry, you won't get me. <laughs> I feel the heat and move. <laughs> okay. And you put firm pressure on it. You yes. don't have to put a lot of pressure. No, just, just put firm, nice pressure. firm pressure. And the biggest tip that I can give you, ladies and gentlemen, is let it cool a little bit before you touch it. And I learned that again today. Yep. Because I haven't done this part for a while quite a while yeah <laughs> yeah it's been a while yeah so so basically um you can see here that this has not gone down right on the edge but that doesn't really matter because this part here is the bit that we want to stick down so we don't have to stress about this this is going to get cut away and it doesn't really matter so you can see now by letting that cool that's actually stuck there quite nicely and it's not going to come off so if you grab your scissors you can just cut that away and we yes. can put the next piece on or I can do that for you. Yes. Thank you. But I always let it cool down because if you don't let it cool down, the glue hasn't actually um, hasn't set in place yet. And that's the same for any sort of um, stabilizer or anything like that. You want to make sure that you just let it cool a little bit before you start handling it. I love this fabric. Isn't it beautiful? Oh, no, it's gorgeous. Like, just look at the the. There's so many different colours. colours. Yeah. It, you know what it reminds me of? A summer sunset here in <gasps> Australia over the over the mountains. Yep. Oh. If you go that's... onto my Instagram later, ladies, you would have seen a, um, I think it was a couple of days ago, last Friday maybe, I put up a picture of the sunset here in Kingaroy. Absolutely gorgeous. And this is what reminds it reminds me of. Very so, nice. Yeah. Okay. Put this back on. This is going to look so good. Oh, uh, wait. So while she's doing that, I'm going to cut it out. So again, hold it down for eight seconds. 
and you don't need to move your iron around either um, and that's where you will end up having some issues when um, when you move your iron around it actually can make it move a little bit and um, not stick correctly so and you're running the risk of the piece moving yep and if you're doing being fussy with what where the pattern where you want it to be yep. especially with um, batiks yep you run yeah, the risk so, of moving it. So, so Becca actually brings up a really good point there. With your bark teeth, especially these sort, sorts here. Now, that cockatoo that you've seen behind me in, in the live streams, that is actually done out of this fabric and one other fabric, which I don't know where that is at the moment. I, um, I only used two fabrics in, in that um, cockatoo. And what I did was actually fussy cut the, the fabric. So I picked the colours that I wanted closest to the edge. So you can see here... That it's got a like it's got a uh, like a fuchsia color in here. It's got a purplish blue here. Then it's got a nice purple and with a bit of fuchsia running through it. So I only used these two fabrics for that cockatoo, and I managed to get some oranges and yellows and purples and pinks out of it, and it just turned out fabulous. So it, it does. It looks so good. It makes a big difference if you fussy cut some of your batiks. So when you are shopping for batiks, really take a good look. Take your time open them out have a look what you can get out of them and how and have a think about how many projects you can get out of them alrighty so I'm just trimming this up and if you've got a pair of scissors there back or do you need this pair? no you stole them oh sorry oh, you stole I did too <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh, I'm a scissor thief <laughs> alrighty so that's that bit cut out and as you can see it's just it here it hid really well just with the eight seconds without moving it and it's all down nice and ready to go and that's the waste that we've got out of that piece so that's not too bad and you can keep these pieces um, like if you if this was going all the way you could you know cut a little small circle out of it or anything like that I generally don't keep pieces this size I'll keep pieces you know a little bit bigger so this size here I would definitely keep if it had their paper on the back of it and um, yeah, that way I could get a, a really nice circle out of it. I could even get an eye out of that or something along those lines. So that's another thing that you can do as well. So while I say, yeah, this is the only waste you've got, you don't necessarily get that much waste if you um, have little little buckets to put all your um, scrap bits and pieces Pieces, in. Yeah. Especially if you are right into applique. Um, yeah, they do come in handy, most definitely. So what's your favourite part about applique, Beck? Oh, you know what? It's when you sew it all down. Really? Yep. Oh, okay. That's my favourite part. Well, lucky we're a good team then, because that's my least favourite part. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like, um, I don't know, it makes me feel like I'm in kindergarten, I guess. <laughs> cutting out all the shapes. Tracing out all the shapes and then cutting them all out. So that's my favourite part. And watching, watching it all come together. Um, I just yeah it, I'm not a drawer or anything like that like while I do long arm quilting and stuff like that I don't technically draw um, I've given it a go in the past but yeah I'm not that good at it and I can't draw people and I can't draw <laughs> animals because they definitely don't <laughs> we just got the voice the artist from beyond which is my daughter Savannah um, <laughs> she um, just said people are impossible to draw she's actually an artist i'll show you some of her artwork um in future live streams she is absolutely amazing and oh. i found another i found another picture for you to for, for you to do for inspiration to savannah well she drew a, on her um phone last night she drew a lovely person <laughs> that's quite funny was it <laughs> she goes here you go that's my person <laughs> oh my goodness Alrighty. <coughs> All right. Do you want me um, to cut that out? So where are we up to now? Okay. They're a bit small. Yep. I'll cut that Big out. Big pieces. Okay. So if you can hear some banging in the background, we've just had a Bunnings um, <gasps> hardware store open up and... Is the fireworks going off? Yep. The fireworks are going off. Oh my God. Oh, we've got it. Got a little visitor. This is Beck's son. You probably won't see him because the camera's tilted, but Beck's son is come out for a visit. Hello. 
It's okay. No one can see you. No one can see. It's all right. No one can see you, mate. <laughs> Look, you, get, you get down here. There we go. Say hello. hello. <laughs> That's Dustin, everybody. That's Beck's little boy. Alrighty. <laughs> oh, can you hear the fireworks? Mm. Pretty loud, aren't they? Come see. Yep. Okay. Okay. See you later. Just be careful with going down the stairs, mate. It's dark out there. Alrighty. So, what are we up to now? Okay. Cut each piece out nice and neatly. Now peel away the paper yep. from the back of the applique shapes and position them onto the background fabric in numerical order. Yep. And then iron to fuse them in place. Okay. Alrighty, so this is where my tips and tricks come in. When you are trying to get the paper off, sometimes that can be a little bit problematic. And all I do is I grab a pin. Can I just have your pin cushion? I can't get Oh, it's locked, is it? It's oh, sorry. Okay. Alright, so if you're having trouble getting, like this is coming off quite nicely, you can see there that you can see the glue on there, you get that shine, so the glue's all on there, so we know that that's going to stick down to our background fabric, and it'll just peel away. But if you're having issues getting the pieces off, sometimes that can be a little bit tricky, just get a pin and just run that along, and you can see there, that's just scored the paper. And that just makes it really easy to get it off, and you can see there, the glue is on, and the paper will just peel away nice and quick just like so all right so i'll keep that with that so you know what number it yes, is this one just you. came off by itself <laughs> um so it's a good idea to just make sure that you've got um your placement sheet in place so now, what the instructions didn't actually say anything about using this yes i know these are my tips and tricks. So the pattern doesn't actually tell you to do this. I have a light board just under here and you can see that that's just lit up behind it. So what I do is I place my, I just move my background fabric and I grab my light board and I just smooth out the pattern. So this is the pattern layout sheet. So the other one actually has applique shapes written on it and this is the layout sheet. So I usually use some, um, some washi tape or something along those lines to stick it down and I'll just grab some all right bear with me for a second I just gotta find some all right tell Nero Lee to put a movie on for him Okay, so this is just washi tape, and I just get a little bit of washi tape, and I just stick it in place, making sure that it's straight, and this um, light board actually has a ruler on it, so you can see down here it's got a ruler, so that makes it super easy for me to um, stick that in place, and the reason I use washi tape is because it doesn't leave any residue um, on anything that I stick it to, so I use this on my washing machine, um, on my washing machine, on my sewing machine, um, when I'm so wanting to do a scant um, quarter inch measurement and I just um, run my fabric along the side of that but it's really good for this sort of stuff as well alrighty so we've got that in place and then what I do is I just grab my background fabric and in this case we're actually using calico so that makes it a nice um, cheap way to do it and you can see that this piece is a little bit bigger, okay, than the um, paper. And we've done that on purpose because we'll trim this up a bit later. So I'm not sure if you can see that or not coming through yet. You can just make out the shape, okay. And you don't need a light box for this because not everybody used a light box up at the Bunya Mountains anyone, either. I don't um, think anyone used a light box. I think um, Del did. Oh, okay. Yeah, De Adele and Gillian did. Someone did. So you can see there that I've got the light box behind it and you can just make out the images, but you can see the numbers. Like looking on camera, you can't see it, but in person, you can see it really clearly. So basically all we're going to do is we're going to find, so these are his ears, and we want number five. And this was number five. Yeah. So all I'm doing now is I'm putting the glue side down in place 
I'm sorry? Um, Carol's asked, so you don't have to trace the layout sheet onto your fabric? No. You no, don't. no. You can if you want to. Like that, That's just an extra step that I don't like to do, basically. I find it, it just easier to do this. You can just put it in place. And then there's no error either. Mm, so you yes. might, you know, when you trace something out, you could end up actually tracing it wrong or um, in the wrong position and not realize. Um, or the paper underneath might move or something along those lines. But yes, you can trace it out if you want to. I prefer not to. And then basically all I do from here is I just grab my... I, I grab my, um, the light box is great. My eyes are, are not, not what they, they used to be. <laughs> and Biz used canvas, so she needed a light box. Yeah, you do. And you couldn't see through? She needs. I need to try the light box. Yeah, um, <coughs> if you don't have a light box, Biz, maybe if you put it up against the window, if it's a bright, sunny day, yeah. that works as well. Um, it is a little bit trickier though. A light box is really good. And this light box that I'm using, it's actually not a light box. It's a light um, yeah. a light board. Um, and tattooists use this. So if you go onto eBay or Amazon yeah. or anywhere like that and look up for a tattoo um, light box. I just typed in light board. Yeah, light board. That will come up. So yeah. a lot of us here in Australia get stuff off eBay. Um, and Catherine Fleming's just saying it's a light pad. Um, oh, yep, a light yeah, pad. Light as well. pad as well. So, yeah, so basically just um, have a bit of a search and, and see what you can find. Um, and I have seen them on Amazon and places like that. They're brilliant, they're easy to move to. Um, and most of them actually come with a little tote bag. It's not a very flash tote bag, but it still comes with a tote bag. Oh, so they ripped off. I didn't get one. Oh, did you? No. Oh, mine came with a tote bag. Oh, I'm going to go back and complain now. <laughs> Alrighty, so what I do from here, and you know, this is not everybody's cup of tea of doing things or anything like that. So my pieces don't move on me or anything like that. One at a time, I iron them down. So at this point, this is where I get my little um, ironing pad. And all this is, is a piece of MDF, or in this case, it's actually an old um, ironing pad that had a cutting board on the back. And you can see there, I just wrap fabric around it and a bit of cotton wadding and sticky tape. And there you go, it's an ironing pad. It's perfect for this application. Now, that's not going to move too far because the glue is just actually going to hold it in place a little bit for me. And then all I do is just slide the pad underneath the fabric and I know that that's not going to go anywhere. And, and now, and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't move. move. No. So now what I do is I'll get back to actually just press that into place. Okay. Yep. So we just do it for the same amount of time. Yep. You can use the Teflon sheet at this point too. Oh, I put it away. Did you? Yeah. I'm not supposed to. I was being neat and tidy. <laughs> Pedantic. That's, that's... <laughs> so I always use my um, Teflon sheet just in case I've got something on the bottom of my iron. Okay, so if you haven't got one of these ladies, I will leave links where you can get this stuff from. Um, I'm actually out of stock at the moment and uh, I do have some coming in, but they're not due until the end of the month. So, and just leave it for about eight seconds. I just peel That's it back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I felt that. So I just give it a bit of a, like a blow on it or something like that. And then I just get my finger and where these points are, I just make sure that they're, they're, not they're not lifting up. And that's perfect. It's not lifting up. So now I can take that light board out. Not light board. The ironing, ironing board, board. And I can slide this back into place again. Um, to answer Paula's question, this one is the A3 size, this light pad. Yes. I wouldn't get... I, I do have A4 ones for when we're at the retreats because they're limited space. But if you're working with this at home, definitely get the A3. It's the definitely. best size. Um, if you're into diamond painting as well, it's if you've oh, not seen diamond, brilliant. yeah, if you've not seen diamond painting, go and have a look at some of my past videos in diamond painting, and you'll see these light boards in action. And this is what my light board is actually for, not for applique, but it comes in handy for applique. <laughs> Alrighty, so we've, I've, you can now, like, you can move that around now. That fabric is not going to come off, and then I just line it up again, and you can see there that it's all in place, and then we get our next one. And I like to do whatever I do on this side, I do to the other side. And then I know I'm balanced. Okay. Okay. I, I was thinking just work 
from one side to the other? Well, it depends on the pattern. Yeah. On that. So it would depend on the pattern. You can do that from one side to the other if it's like um, flowers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But when you've got something that is like this, that Almost has got, definitely got a center. It's de yeah, it's definitely got an outside. It's definitely got a center. I would, I, I feel personally that I would rather get my center pieces in place. Yeah. Um, knowing then that I'm not going to come too far this way with one of my pieces because oh, mistakes and happen. Yeah, and, and he's, yeah, then his face might look a little bit skewy, so that's where that sort of comes into play. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and the same, because he's got such a large nose as well, that would be the next piece that I'd place, and then his, um, then his these, belly. these ones here, his chest. yeah, yep. his chest, and then those ones. So, um, it it is entirely up to you on what pattern that you're working with. And, yep. and all the rest of it. But for a garden scene, I would probably go from one side to the other. Yeah. But for something that's symmetrical like this, that definitely has a center, definitely mm -hmm. has an outside, I definitely like to do that. Okay. Just to give it a bit of balance. Yeah. I, I hope sense. that that makes sense to everybody. That's just how I like to do things. And as I said, I am no expert. But you explaining that. Yep. That makes sense now because I had the idea of just going from one side to yep. the other. But your explanation definitely makes sense makes okay. better sense yeah. yeah cool no worries oh well <laughs> even with yeah. even with the tequila i'm making sense that's all right <laughs> i'm happy with that all righty so again we know that this piece goes over here because the the template um underneath is telling us that so we can just take this off pop that over there into the rubbish bin we just lay it in place And that's in place now so then we can just slide our board underneath because the the calico is not um yep just slide it that's it perfect and that hasn't moved so you see there she's just slid that under and that piece hasn't moved at all even though even though we've separated it from the the pad underneath and to this so and this is just a beginner's way of doing it as you get better at it you might not need a light board underneath it. You'll be able to put the um, put the the pattern piece down and just go for it. Um, but this is just the way we do it with beginners. Okay. Remember, it's hot. Nicole. Yes, I know. I'm touching the cool end now. <laughs> <laughs> you right. learned that lesson. Yes, I learned. I'm a quick learner. I'm a quick study. Yes, you are. Mm. You definitely are. All right. Okay, take that out again. So this is now in place so we can move the, the top sheet and it doesn't really matter. Alrighty. So that is now in place. Ooh, one there moved a little bit. That's okay. Alrighty. Should be right, mate. Yeah, should be right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> should be right. Near enough's good enough. Nah, there we go. Alright, so <laughs> that's not the case at all. <laughs> Alrighty, so the next piece is the nose. Put it on the right way. All right, grab that. So you can see he's starting to take shape now. Beautiful. There we go. And if you don't have um, a Teflon sheet or anything like that, you can just use regular baking paper or greaseproof paper. Um, yeah. to do this as well. Um, for many years I just, I never had any of these because every time I went to buy one they were always out of stock because they are super popular um, and the suppliers in Australia seem to always be running out <laughs> and waiting for shipments to come in from the US. So I actually in my kit for many years had a roll of baking paper, just your cheap um, stuff that you can get from the supermarket. It's usually a dollar fifty for a roll of 25 meters or something along those lines. Alrighty, so now we would do down here. Okay. okay. So that's his belly. Is it's that right? Yeah. Yep. Looks good. Okay. He is a little bit skew if anyway. Yeah. Um, oh, what piece. pieces are these? 21. This one? And, and that one. one. Oh, I'm thinking there's one missing. That's okay. because you already that's have right, done it. That's right, I've already done it. Okay. Alright. 
And when you cut things out, if you don't cut on the outside of the line, it is, it's not a hard and fast rule. No. I just like to do that because it just gives you a little bit of leeway and this is just like nice and close. I will see the replay. Gonna get a nap before work. Bye, everybody. See you later, Benita. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Um, and they call Teflon sheet parchment paper. Oh, the greaseproof paper parchment paper. Yes, that's what it is. It moved. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, that's okay. It's all right. Well, it's not glued down, so it's all right. That's the yeah. thing. That's all right. Move him down a bit. Down a bit. Yeah. Switch him this way a bit. Not that way. Oh. This way. This is. You'll see Beck's pedanticness now. Drives me crazy. <laughs> All right, it's just so how slow, she is. just slow. Okay, Beck's getting used to this technique. I, on the other hand, have been doing it for a while, so I'm a little bit more quicker with it and all the rest of it. So, okay. um, yeah. But you can see he's starting to take shape. So we're just putting his chest on at the moment. It looks gorgeous already. I oh, know. Definitely adding the pinks and the purples in is, is definitely the way to go. So, yeah. There we go. All right. So that's in place now. And when it's hot, you can see that the pink actually changes color. And over over the next, as it cools down, this will oh, actually, too. yeah, it goes darker. It'll get a little bit lighter. Wow. <laughs> and you can make these ironing pads any size that you want. Um... I did actually have a smaller one, especially for applique, but I have no idea where it ended up. I think actually um, my daughter ended up with it. <laughs> okay, so. And the good thing about using the Teflon sheet, if you accidentally put um, the fabric the wrong way up and the glue's facing up, and you've been distracted, the phone's rung or something like that, you thought you've had it in place, you come back and you put the iron on it, boom, it's stuck to the bottom of your iron. Whereas with the Teflon um, sheet, it'll just stick to that, or the parchment paper or your baking paper, it will stick to that. And then you can just chuck that piece of paper away or peel it off your Teflon sheet and um, your iron hasn't been wrecked. Because I'm telling you now, it is a bugger to get this stuff off. Yep, they look good. Yep. This is quite fun. You like it? Yeah. You enjoying it? Yeah. Oh. What about everybody else? Everybody else enjoying the the live craft along? Hopefully some of you will be crafting. <laughs> what oh Savannah! <laughs> I heard Red say something. And then she laughed. Yeah. <laughs> Did he say no? Or was yes. or was that you? <laughs> no, he said yes. <laughs> what happened? Oh. oh, okay. I thought you were laughing at us because you said no, but you cheeky bugger. <laughs> Sorry, my kids are all in the background and they're all having a bit of a giggle at us. And Brendan's and the, husband. and the husband's um, <laughs> commenting in the peanut gallery, which you guys can't hear, but we can. So, yeah. If and he's we, watching as well. He's watching as well. <laughs> uh, but, um, he's got actually got a live tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Um, I'm enjoying it and stitching away at the same time. Awesome! Never saw the process before. Thanks for the lesson. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Carol. Um, Paula and Ka um, Catherine are enjoying themselves too. Awesome! We're, we're hoping that um, we can make this a regular thing. Like, we don't do it every Friday night. Um, but we've got some cute little projects that we want to do in, in the future. So we'll be, you know, probably every two weeks. And um, during school holidays, we sort of take a bit of a break because um, we've got the kids or we go away or stuff like that so yeah yeah go visit family yeah catch up because you've got to have a break you can't oh. <laughs> just right. got it in place and just move it all over <laughs> yes okay yeah awesome okay all righty so where do we go where would you go next um i'd now start working out so okay. we can probably put these pieces in and then just concentrate on his face okay let's get going which one's the next? Where is it? It's somewhere. In what there. number is it? It is... 18. 18. 18. One, One eight. eight. <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, dearie me. Yes, you need a break, so keep 
keep it fun. Well, that's exactly right. And if nothing else, um, we get to have a break. We come back a bit fresh. And, you know, the kids don't always see us working either. Um, and we get to spend time with our family, um, which is very important. Um, why are we... Are we doing these both at the same time? Yeah. We're going to be super tricky. Okay. All right, you can do it. Come back this way. No, no, because it's right up against. Oh, yep, yep. Yep. So, you know, that's what happens. Yeah, See, just, that one's right yeah, out. So yeah, I'm yeah. going to move this one out a little bit. Yep. Cool. Awesome. So they sort of match up. Yep. Yep. I yep. like that. Yep. You happy with that? Yep. All right, we may proceed. <laughs> so, perfect. So you're yes. getting the hang of it now. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, once you yeah. get into it, it's just... So I didn't get around to everybody stuff. that was doing it because a lot of people were had their own mats and stuff like that and they were just getting right into it, so I didn't want to disturb them. Um, there was a few people that hadn't done applique before, so um, Beck was helping them with theirs and um, then I'd go around and make sure that they were okay and, and stuff like that at the retreat. So, yeah, um, <laughs> Kath goes, yep, bingo. <laughs> House. <laughs> That's another thing for it too. <laughs> oh, do <dear> me. <laughs> Alrighty. It's our favourite segment of the retreats now. Yeah, it is. That's mine. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Oh. There, there, Mr. Kiki. Alright. Okay, so I'll just line that up a bit there. And so as you can see, we're just lining it up each time, but it is going together quite quick. And you don't have to worry about using pieces of tape to hold it in place or anything like that. In the next um, live that we, we do on this particular one, like we're not going to get into the sewing or anything tonight, um, mainly because we've got the kids here and um, it is already 8.30 and they'll be starting to get tired. But um, in the next one, we'll be doing the sewing and what number are you looking for? 13. 13. One, three. I'm lucky for some. Is that that one? Yes. We should be able to do 14 as well. I think so. Where's number 14? 27. Here. Oh, yeah. oh, there. I'll hold that in place. Okay. So there is a um, another technique that I want to show you guys um, to put it on black fabric. So in the next one, which is on the 21st of June, when we will talk about the black one and also the stitching down, we'll show you the tips and tricks um, for stitching down your, your um, applique by machine. We're going to show you how to put it onto black fabric. And the reason I'm not showing you tonight is because I actually have to perfect the technique a little bit further um, and just get a few more tips and tricks. So one of the ladies, if you go over onto our Facebook page, DD Sewing Retreats, she actually did the crocodile um, in some beautiful rainbow batiks and she did it on black fabric. And I had never seen it done that way before and I'd always wondered if you wanted to do applique on black fabric, how you do it. Yeah. So I actually learned something at one of our retreats this time. But now what I wanna do, like I've got the basics for it and all the rest of it, but now what I wanna do is perfect the technique and show you guys how to do it. So you would be able to apply um, if you were using a heavy canvas or anything. And this is mainly for um, Biz who works with canvas and has mentioned it. Um, this that technique will actually be perfect for you because you won't have to use your tape or anything like that so I'll be able to show you how it's all done um, yeah and it's and like I was surprised how easy that actually was to do the way yeah. Jenny did it and, and whatnot um, and I'm just gonna do a little bit more research on it and make sure that I've got all the the tips and tricks right for you um, and then that way you'll be able to do it and it's super easy and yeah like you'll be you would just go oh wow that is like a aha moment right there so Definitely. yeah it was wasn't it like yeah. it was amazing how when it all she came explained together it to yeah. us, it was yeah. like oh wow that... and see she had never done it before either and she happened to go in i forget what shop it was um down in brisbane she went into a shop and they showed her how to do it so yeah i'm having a drink paula you go make your coffee and i'll have my drink <laughs> <laughs> So you can see now that um, I'm not actually getting involved with the placement or anything like that. Beck's getting the hang of it. 
she's got, taking it a little bit slower than what I normally do. Um, so yeah, she's just getting into the hang of it and basically um, she's going to keep pressing it down and just... <clears throat> okay. There we go. My son's just come out again to visit. So Nicole's taken him back. <laughs> Oh, what are you having for morning tea, Biz? <laughs> he wanted to play the iPad and he walked straight past it. Oh. <laughs> like, it's just there. <laughs> I told him it was there on the coffee table. <laughs> he goes, I just want the iPad. I'm like, it's just there. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he just looked at me and rolled his eyes. <laughs> it's like, adult. <laughs> I walked straight past that. <laughs> and and he's he go going, you could have just asked. I could have told you where it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kids, they just crack you up, don't they? Absolutely. All right. Okay. Okay. So you can see here, this one here isn't sticking down um, as well, and mainly because it's got hot a couple of times. So that can sometimes happen. So I have a little trick for you for that sort of thing. And I'll just go and grab it. And all I do is I when I find it <laughs> oh tea toasted raisin bread and peanut butter oh and Earl Grey tea of course oh, of course oh. Earl Grey of tea course. that's the only sort of tea you should have very nice <laughs> so um, I'm sure that a lot of you would have seen Roseanne's um, basic glue before okay this is a go-to um, thing for me I always have this when I'm doing applique, I always do this. Now, while this is a great product and I generally don't have a problem with it peeling off or anything like that, sometimes it can be a little bit of a, excuse me, a bit of a problem with Bartiques because the dye might, there might be a lot of dye still left in it and it just won't um, stick down or for whatever reason that is. So this one here has been heated um, several times now because we've put so many pieces in one place. So I just get my little um, bottle of Roseanne, uh, Roseanne's, Roxanne's glue <laughs> um, and I just put a little dollop under that corner and then I just pop that down and when I hit that with the iron again it will um, it will just adhere in place. And I know some people that actually don't even use fusible web, they only use the Roxanne's glue. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And I'm one of those people. <laughs> I, oh, I now have, she tells me. <laughs> I have done that before. Um, I think a couple of weeks ago we had the heart quilt behind us. That red heart quilt that oh, was behind yes. us here. Yes. Um, that was all done with the Roxanne's glue. Okay. Yeah, I didn't use fusible web on that. And the Missouri Star um, Dresden plate one that used to be behind me when I had... Um, that I did as a finish at Friday, the fl flower pot one. Yes. That was all done with that as well. Okay, this is not working. Well, what's wrong? Because the ear moved. Okay, so we'll just move that out of the way. Watch this. So we've had a bit of an incident here, okay, and <laughs> I'm peeling it off. The ear had moved. <gasps> so <clears throat> this is where the Roxanne's glue comes in handy. Do we have any in stock? What? Roxanne's glue. No, we're out of stock. Oh no! It's um, it is on the way. I ordered some the other day. I sold my last one, so I've got some. Um, coming. It probably ta it takes about fourteen days to get to me, hun. So in this case, my Roxanne um, this we only got yesterday. This is a uh, just a this is just a different applicator. It's the same thing. This has been designed by um. I can't think of her name right Pauline. now. Yeah, Pauline, but we don't know her last name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I'll be trying to get some of this, um, the new applicator in, but this is what I've got coming at the moment, which is the same stuff, it's just a different applicator. Yeah. So, so in this case, yeah, so in this case, um, what's happened is the, the ear had actually moved when we um, ironed it on. The, the little point down here had moved, and this was going to end up sitting on it. So what I'm doing is I've peeled it off, 
and I'm not going to worry about the glue still on there and it probably still adhere down anyway but I've just put my Roxanne's glue down and I'm just going to place that into place again yeah. again and you can see now that that is now away from this piece so now we can slide that under so there's another tip um, for you you can just um yep that's it you can just use your Roxanne glue as well and what will happen now is Beck will actually press those pieces into place and that ear into place as well okay. have to take go take hubby watch the replay bye thanks for no worries hun have a safe trip to the station and we'll see you soon thanks for watching bye. thanks for joining us we really appreciate it Okay, so <gasps> Carol's actually met her too. Yeah. Oh, What's her last name, um, Carol? Sorry, I moved my fingers. Yes, move your fingers. <laughs> Have a good day, Liz. Okay, it's um. Pauline's Quilters, Quilters World or something is yeah, her that's, shop. Yeah, that was her yeah. shop, yes, and she's an online shop only. Yeah. But yeah, but we're um gonna try. We're gonna get some of this this um Roxanne's uh glue. We get the normal stuff in, but then we get the new applicator. We're gonna get in. So um, oh, she might be on the back here. Yep. It does tell me that it's not for human consumption. I don't know why you'd want to eat glue, but anyway, that's all right. It's just gone through the. That's it. Yep. There we go. Cool. And then this one down this here. This one's yep. down here. Did you do this one here? No, I didn't, because I think that that's going to stick down again. It still was quite shiny. I think it just never stuck to the begin with. So, yeah. That should be Yeah, that should be good to go. Yeah. Beautiful. Alrighty. Okay, so there you go. See, even, the, even um, people like us make mistakes and have to reposition and all the rest of it. We're all human. That's exactly right. Alrighty. It's coming together really well. Yep. He is. And really quickly, like yeah. once you start, the, I mean, the longest part of, of applique is actually tracing it out, cutting it out, and sticking it down. Once you've got that underway, like it's probably going to take back about an hour next time um, when we we come back and and we finish him off. It's probably going to take her an hour. We don't quilt behind them. Um, we do this as a quilt as you go. So. Um, can you cut that out, please? Yep, no worries. One that we forgot. And number four too. I'll and do number that. Four. <laughs> I'll do that one too. Okay. So um yeah, so we'll we'll do this as a quilt as you go, and we use fusible fleece behind ours. Um, just makes it super easy. You don't have to pin it down and all the rest of it. And if anybody that knows me knows that I just like to have um, quick and easy. Um, I think it's Pauline Rogers. I told her about the Vanderlei Design Studio in Queensland. I think that is her last name, actually. We've got a bag here with all the goodies of of the show and all the rest of it, and we're going to go through most of them with the um, with the the uh, light, with the um, video that we're going to put together and and about what we've done. Are you going to teach quilt as you go? <laughs> <laughs> go tip that you do. Um, yes, I will be. I definitely will be teaching you how I do this one um, by um, Quilt As You Go. Awesome, there we go. Number four and number ten are now cut out. Awesome! <laughs> Alrighty. Yeah, so um, the, the technique of Quilt As You Go with this one is super easy. Basically, um, because we're not doing a massive negative area space around like so you've got all of this um in place and then we've only got a small amount around the outside there is no need to actually quilt around it and that's the style that we're going for um in this particular one so you would have seen in the the cockatoo that um there was no quilting on the background it was all just the shapes that were on here and we used a blanket stitch on that one and basically we had the fleece on the back and we just went for it. And because it's going into a picture frame, we actually didn't have, um, <coughs> excuse me, we didn't actually have a backing on that when we did it. Um, but it's really easy just to put a backing on it and then you can just um, go for it. This seems to be a bit big. Okay. So I'm just going to trim him. Trim him down a yeah. little bit. 
And that's where cutting on the outside of the line, it makes it a little bit big, but it gives you that leeway to trim it down if yeah. you need to. Yeah, so once you've trimmed it off. Yeah. You, you need to have it, yeah, a little bit bigger. Gee, you fussy cut that hell out of that, didn't you? I did for this part. Yes, I did. <laughs> I fussy cut, cut it on just very pedantically. Mm -hmm. Okay. I went for the green eyes because yep. the yellow eyes just did not look good. That made them look a little bit evil. That's what I thought. They were my thoughts. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I'll just do one eye because yep. I think it's going to move or yep. possibly, but it's in place. Mm -hmm. Slowly. Oh, 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 skill and ability right there, people. <laughs> skill and ability. So what um, some of you may not know, good morning, Katrina, how are you? Thanks for joining us. So what some of you may not know is that um, Beck is super, super new to a lot of these techniques. So um, I... So she's doing a lot of learning in front of you guys. Um, and I'm doing my best to teach her the the easiest way to do things and it's nice and slow yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice oh, and slow I'll just wait i've got to wait for the iron to heat up <laughs> yeah so Be beck is is learning a lot of new techniques so um beck only sewed something by applique with blanket stitch was the cockatoo was the first time that she had done it um you had done this you did the straight edge on that one didn't you did I do that? Okay. You stuck it all down though. Yeah, and cut it out. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, that was the first time that you'd actually applied something down, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Well, I did applique Christmas shirt when I was in grade seven. Okay. But we used, um, you know, those gel glues. Yep. That's what we used to stick down. So we did all this. Yeah. All the process up until then, instead of sewing. Yep. We did those. Like, oh, okay. Puffer yeah, paints yeah, or... puffer, yeah, the puff yeah. paints. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, so, um, so but while, like, Beck is learning a lot on the job, and so, um, yeah, if you haven't given us a thumbs up yet, you would. <laughs> Kath, <laughs> Kath wants a drop there. Kath! <laughs> <laughs> Who said about a drop there? Kath, let me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, shh, don't tell anybody. I'll get in trouble by the, the Aussie population. Um, we like to scare tourists and say that there's drop bears and they drop out, <laughs> out of the gum trees on you. They don't. Um, <laughs> but Kath will probably be able to explain what a drop bear is a little bit easier than what I can. Um, but, yeah, we we like to um, scare the bejesus out of people. <laughs> it's like folklore for Yeah, us. it's like a, um, a, a, an urban myth. Oh, helps if you put it into place, Rebecca. <laughs> oh, she, she's just... She's in trouble. She, she's in trouble. She just full-named herself. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca. Yep. That's when I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold it in place so it doesn't move on you again. How's okay. that? Sounds good. Sounds good? Awesome. Morning, Linda. How are you? Do, do, do. Where'd he go? Oh, there's his eye. Yep. <laughs> I had it. Oh no, what did I do with it? <laughs> it was blending in. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Thank you, Biz, yes. <laughs> <sighs> so if you're working with small stuff like this and you don't have a steady hand, um, use a little bit of a, like a, a glue pen or something like that. Just put a little dollop in the center so it doesn't move on you. And if you're not, um, cause if you, you know, you've got a little bit of a shake or something like that, when you're working with small pieces, you can actually just bump them out of place. And Beck did notice that after she'd cut this out, she had What's made it. What's going on? What? I think the paper's lifting. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when when Beck was doing this, she realised that she had made a mistake, and the white bit she should have cut as a full circle. Um, so this is being a little bit more tedious than um, it should be. It should be. So yeah, there we go. But if you don't have a steady hand, 
just um, a little bit of uh, glue pen or even the Roxanne's glue just to pop it down in place and then you'll be right. Yep, so that keeps lifting because yeah. it keeps getting reheated. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right, I'll put a little bit of that on there. Okay, I'll wait till you do that. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. Please move your hand. Yeah, I'm just holding it. <laughs> I don't want to burn you. I'll move my fingers. I'll feel the heat. <laughs> yeah, that's what um is supposed to do, um, Biz. Basically, what happened was. I was just letting um, Beck go for it, and as soon as she done it, she realised that she had done the wrong thing. Um, so basically, um, yeah, that's what you would normally do. You'd cut that full circle, then you'd put that little bit there, and then you put the next bit on, and you just stack them into place. Um, and as soon as she did, as soon as Beck did it, she realised that oh, I should have cut, and you verbalised that straight away. So sometimes it's really good to just let people go, and like with small projects and stuff like that. Let them just have a little bit of a run and see if they, um, you know, catch themselves out and, and stuff like that. And Beck did. She basically said, oh, man, I should have, you know, pretty much straight away. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. And it's super hard for me to sit here and um, not, not, not get involved. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, my instinct is to just go in and help. But that's not how Beck's going to um, learn. The, the only way that Beck is going to learn and retain everything is if she actually does it herself. So I'm here for guidance, but Beck does it all, um, all herself. Yeah, Beck did has got um, young, steady hands and doesn't have the shakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I fussy cut these ones too. Did you? Yep. What are these ones? These are his forehead. His forward. His sort of eyebrows. Oh, yeah. If you want to call them eyebrows. Yeah. His cranky eyebrows. <laughs> they make him look cranky, I reckon. The red ones on the Christmas one look cranky. <laughs> those ones, because they're red, I think. Okay, so um, Catherine's just put up that it's something we scare tourists with. Sorry, they don't really exist. Um, <laughs> we really do love our overseas tourists. Great and safe place to visit all year round. Thumbs up. It's smiley face. <laughs> And a heart. <laughs> and it is. It's a great place to visit. Like, Absolutely. Yes, we have scary animals here. And do they get over-publicized? Yes. They get over-publicized because we have to make sure that our, um, our tourists are safe when they do come here. That they don't go traipsing off into um, the bush or into crocodile-infested waters or anything like that. And, um, yeah, so but, we do, we, we, you know. Like, but other countries have stuff too stuff as well yeah. scary animals which we think oh my god yeah <laughs> you have very scary animals <laughs> yeah we do <laughs> we have a few but you know what i've lived in the middle of the bush and you very rarely see them they keep mm. to themselves if you go up and provoke a bear it's going to rip you apart you know like if you go and provoke a brown snake it's going to bite you it's like any wild animal That's it. Oh, he's coming together, isn't he? He's looking oh, good. That's so cute. <laughs> so, as I said, this is probably not other people's way of doing it, but this is what I like to do with my beginners. So they get a really good feel for it. They understand the placement value of everything. Um, and you know what, even though I've done applique in the past before, I still do it this way because I just find it's it's the easier way to go. I just feel that everything goes into place really well and um, I don't make as many mistakes. But as you've seen, we did have an error there. We just pulled that off, used the Roxanne's glue, placed it back into place and, and, it has, look, and you're you good to go. You can't even tell. No, because this is going to get stitched down. Like if this wasn't going to get stitched down, then I'd probably go ahead and put some more fusible... Um, um, heat, and bond. heat and bond on it but because it's going to actually get blanket stitched down the rock sand glue is fine i'm going to do number eight as well yep because it's all in one big patch so yep. 
Oh, we've got the hiccups. <laughs> you said you'd get them. I know. <laughs> He looks good. I like him back. I yeah. like your colours. I like your fussy cutting. What do you think? Give it a thumbs up, everybody. Give us a yes. Cool. Leave us a comment. I'm so glad that you've all decided to join us today. I really do appreciate that you're coming in and um, having this, this craft along with us. We just thought it would be a nice way just to all sort of connect and... Something a bit different. Something a bit different. And hopefully as time goes on, um, you know, you'll all get your sewing out and we'll just have a big... Um, a big quilting fest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a virtual stitching, so to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Nicole's an awesome coach. Oh, thanks, guys. I appreciate that. <laughs> I love her teaching method. It's the oh. it's a it's a rest way to pass on. Pass a Friday night. Oh, it's the best way to pass a Friday night. <laughs> rest. I'm like, huh? <laughs> what have we got? That one. A um, bit of hair. And number four. And they're pieces of paper, so that's all good. Um, there should be another one like that. What number was it? Uh, I don't know, but it looks exactly the same as that. Okay. Well, that's all that I had here. What am I doing? I don't know. What are this you doing? Needs to this needs to come out. Uh, number two. I didn't see a number two anywhere. I should hope not. No, <laughs> <On> Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's not here, hun. Uh, I definitely cut it out. Okay, well, we'll have to trace a piece out. Okay. It's not in the box over there. I have to do a search. We've lost a piece. Oh dear. Check the rubbish bin. What colour is it? Uh, well, I'm um, assuming it'd be blue or green. What colour is that one? The blue. Blue, yeah. Okay. We've lost a piece. We're just looking oh, for it. No. <laughs> no, not in the bin. No. Where else were they? Okay. It might be up underneath over there still. I lost a piece too. When I did the cockatoo, I lost a foot and a piece of the branch. Not once, but twice. Don't have it? Right. It's on the floor. No. You know, no. Well, this is the only rubbish oh. I've got here. Let's see, is it in there? No. No. These are all just cutoffs. Oh, I wonder what I've done with it. I wonder if it's under the light pad. No. No. Okay. All right. have to cut we'll a piece. just. <laughs> No, I'm not cutting it out of that. Oh, I'm sorry. It's different fabric. Oh, my goodness. No way. Oh, my goodness. I got it wrong, people. <laughs> I got it wrong. Sorry he's upside down, but this was the best um, view we could get for the um, camera. And I don't have a, a big enough tripod to put the camera behind us. So, yes, it is upside down. But you get the general idea of what we're doing and, and how it um, all goes together. But he's looking pretty good. I'm liking him. Check yep. the bottom of your slipper. <laughs> I don't have slippers on tonight. <laughs> um, it's a very safe place because where I live, I never encounter any scary animals. Yeah, see, we haven't here in Kingaroy either. I um, We had a couple of snake scares out at Jerong where we lived, Kath, and that was about it. Um, but, yeah, other than that, I don't. you don't really come across them very often. No. You know they're there. They know we're here, and they sort of just stay out of our way, really. Don't they? Yep. Uh. I do. I'm just going to leave it for now. Yep. Because I fussy cut this as well, so... Okay, cool. All right, well, we'll get that on. Helps so we, did, we just... <laughs> we need to take the paper off, people. <laughs> yeah, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Beck's tip for the night. Take the paper off the applique. That one's off? Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Radio. All right, so just gotta slide that under. Board under. Yep. Nice and slow. Keep going. 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 Okay. All righty.
Almost done. Alrighty. Apart from the piece that's missing in action. Yeah, we've lost number <laughs> two. We've lost a piece. So we're gonna have to retrace that out. So um and apparently Beck fussy cut that, so yeah. It's all right. And it might show up once we clean up as well. So yeah, we'll so, just see. Yeah. But that's basically it. We um I've got everything on there. We can remove the light pad now as well. We'll leave that on. We'll leave the um, koala on there because we've got a piece that we've still got to put on. So we just remove that light pad. Um, I'll get you to uh, bring back the awning pad because there's just a couple of bits that need to be stuck down. And I'm just going to use the Roxanne glue for that. Okay. Doesn't want to stick. Alrighty. Your cockatoo did that as well. He's yeah, his tail pieces. his tail just didn't want to stick down for me. No. Alright. Okay, there's a lot of pressure in that rock sounds blue. Alright. <clears throat> um Teflon sheet. Teflon sheet. Alright, so we're just going to give it a one last press and then he'll be get set aside ready for stitching. Um, the next video that we're going to do will be on the uh, 21st of June and that's where we will do... Huh? Where am I ironing? Oh, the whole thing? Yep. Just um, yep, slowly move it across. And then down. I'll just move it just okay. down there. Yep. Awesome. There we go. That should be good. Mm -hmm. oh, he looks lovely. He does look lovely. Oh, <gasps> what come off then? Oh my goodness. It didn't stick. Coming back, coming back. Which way does it go? Is that it? Where's the light pod? We had a piece that didn't stick. And they're all peeling up yeah. here. That's because it's been hit with the heat again and we didn't allow it to cool. So this is what happens when you don't allow it to cool. Okay, I'll put the pad down. I'll just place him into place yep. and... There we go. We'll try that again. <laughs> just on. Turn the heat down a bit, maybe. Might be just a t Don't move it until it's cooled. <laughs> there we go. Alright, that eye's just going to come up, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that just needed it. As you said, you needed to cut that a little bit bigger. Um, because... That would help have, with yeah, this. Yeah, this would help with sticking down. Yeah. And the, the reason that we're having a little bit more trouble is because of the Bartiques. Um, the dye that's in the Bartique is not um, helping at all. Oh, I'm just kidding. There we go. Alrighty. We're just going to let him we're sit. We're just going to let him sit for a second. We won't move <laughs> him again. Um, he is super cute and it does come together pretty quick. So um, from woe to go, we've still got one piece that we've just got to fill in here. So that's why there's a bit of a gap here. But even still, it doesn't look that bad, even if no, you never put that piece <laughs> in. You wouldn't know. No. Um, so yeah, so basically that's how we do our... Um, we'll just turn him around for you so you can see him a bit better. Yep. So that's how we do our applique to make it um, super easy for us. And as we said, we, we didn't let it cool. So as soon as I move that, if the glue's not um, cooled, what happens is it just lifts off. So you wanna be very aware of the fabric that you're using and letting it cool in, in place. And you can see now that that's not moving at all. So basically what we're gonna do now is we're gonna leave it as it is. And then um, next time that we come back, which is on the 21st of June at seven o'clock, we will uh, start to sew this down. Um, are you going to use a verabate gated thread with this one again? Yes. Yep. I okay. reckon that looks good. All right. I'll just get my threads and we'll let everybody else pick. Oh, that's a great idea. 
because yes we used the variegated thread on the cockatoo and it turned out really well um what thread did we use the, one of those didn't we it was the uh, pink one we yes used. it was the pink one I reckon this one. Ooh, I like. So this is the thread that we're going to use, and this is um, Maxi Lock. This is one of my favourite um, threads that I use for quilting as well as um, machine applique. But I have been known to use a 12 weight <laughs> um, cotton as well. But this is the one that we're going to use to applique them down. So what we will do is we will um, cut out some fusible fleece because we're going to put it in a frame and we don't need backing fabric on ours. So no. we're just going to use the fusible fleece and we're going to do a quilt as you go. So we're not going to have any quilting in the background. Um, Catherine's saying he doesn't look as angry now. No. No, the eyes are actually really nice on him. He doesn't look so um, peeved at the world. Um, yeah. <laughs> Compared to the yellow eyes. Yeah, the yellow eyes are just too, yeah, they make him look like, as you said, a drop bear. And the and Christmas one. The Christmas on the one. He's mm, full bar humbug. <laughs> yeah. His little eyebrows make him look very cranky. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the cotton we're going to use. Um, and we will show you the tips and, and tricks that we do for... Um, turning your sharp corners so these little pesky corners that we've got here um, doing the circles and Beck's an expert at it now she's been teaching everybody how to do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah that's basically it for us tonight so we've already been on for two hours almost so if you've got any questions at all just drop them into the um, comments now and I'm just going to move the camera up and that way you're not just looking at a, a... oh hello everybody <laughs> All right, oh, excuse me for a second. Sorry if I'm making everybody jerky and sick with that movement. All right, there we go. So that was our applique session. I'm just gonna turn the bright light off. Oh, yes. <laughs> Blinded by it, can't even see. There we go, that's a oh, bit better. <laughs> All righty, so. Yeah, so that's how we're going to do the. So you can see the cockatoo in the background there. That's how we're going to do the koala, except we're going to have a blue border on him. And um, all the other animals, we're going to do in Bartiks as well. And we're just going to, yeah, do a whole series of them. Yeah. So we'll probably hang end up doing, yeah, hang them up on the wall. And good. I've got a wall in the lounge room that's dark. So it's a, like a feature wall. So I'm going to put all mine up on there. I don't know where you're going to put yours in. You're in your lounge room as well, or. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because you've got that big wall behind the couch. Yep. That look really good there. Yep. So yeah, you can make it like a um like a frame in frame type thing. Oh you know, sort of like on the back of the thing. So yes. yeah. This is a, like I, I really want to hang them up like how they're here. Um that so it look really like that'd look awesome, I reckon, yep. on the wall. I think so. So yeah, so that is our crafting session. We generally go for about two hours. Um we've talked That's a lot. We're thinking about, yeah, yeah, we're we're thinking about two hours. Um, as you can see, you can get a lot done in two hours. So hopefully next time when you come along um, on the 21st, you'll have your uh, applique animals and ready to go. Um, so I encourage you to cu cut them out if you've already got the pattern. Um, get them stuck down using some of the tips and tricks um, that we've shown you here today. You know, if you don't have the Roxanne's glue, that's fine. You can use a glue pen. Um, so line there's um, a myriad of different glue pens out on the we don't have any in stock i sold no. them all up at the retreat oh, so i'm still okay. waiting for stock to come they're out of stock oh the people yeah. that i yeah i have to wait so, so yeah you have to wait longer yeah <laughs> so um yeah so basically um if you've got roxanne glue use that if you've got a glue pen use that that works as well and um yeah because the bartiks can be a little bit problematic as and you've seen. as you've seen um, and just wait for them to cool down and that way you shouldn't have too many issues at all um, if you've got any questions at all Carol reckon she's good to tackle applique now cool have you done much applique before um, Carol just let us know in the comments I think Beck's doing a really good job in learning everything on the job as well um, she's come a long way from her, yeah. her humbled little accordion pouch that she made when she first came to class. Yeah, <laughs> this is, yeah, I made one of these. Yeah, that was the first one. And what did, what did Talon, Talon make? Talon made a plate bag for Girl Gods. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, so basically, um, so she's never done applique before. Never. Well, now you can tackle it. It's super easy to do. Yeah. Like, you can see. It's it, not as hard as what it, you think. No, it's not. It's not as hard as you it's think. It's quite an easy so, craft, I reckon. It is. Mm -hmm. um, like, this is the this is the basic end of um, applique that we've shown you tonight. Um, and that you can see in the background. There is more intricate stuff that you can do. So like um, Baltimore circles and all that sort of stuff. That They can be a little bit um, tricky to do because you're working with bias and stuff like that. But um, we mm. are actually learning in the um, next couple of months, we're actually going to be learning that, those techniques. So we'll be able to pass on all the tips and tricks that we learn. Um, mm. We, yeah, and we're going to be also um, expanding, well, Beck is going to be learning. I'm going to be expanding my knowledge of um, Quilt As You Go and stuff like that. Oh, so yes. yep. um, we got some stuff yesterday that we're going to look at and we're pretty keen to step it up a notch and um, pass on that information to you guys as well because I know that a few people in our live streams have asked about Quilt As You Go. Um, yeah, it's I not was... something that I've taught before because yep. I have my long arm machine, so I'm sort of like doing myself out of business. But um, it is a technique that I need to know, and I, and yep. Beck is really really keen to I learn it no as well. I had no idea up until yesterday. I had no idea what it really was. Yeah, because I'm not very forthcoming with that information because I because you don't I don't really don't do, do it. I, I go yeah, I, a long arm. Yeah, so. I have a long arm, and I don't do quilt as you go, yeah. but. I do need to learn it because people want to know about it. So, I love the lights on the back wall. <laughs> are they new? Yes, they yes. are actually today. <laughs> so, also just squish you that way oh, a bit. Squish over. So, we got our new um, we got our new like, subscribe, share light box. I got that on the weekend when I went shopping with the hubby and the kids. Um, and then I had to get some extra letters because we only had enough for sub. So, and I'm looking at it and the letters are actually smaller. They are. So, but that's okay. That's all right. It says the word subscribe. That's all that matters. And we got the fairy lights. And I put... Uh, a Have you got this as well? Yeah, I got the flowers as well. Because, you know, who doesn't love flowers? And the, the wood wall is new too, as of this afternoon. <laughs> All while I was yeah, so applying, while, while, and um, while I was decorating. Yeah, I was decorating. <laughs> and our Finish It Friday went up on the... Too. And of course, I can't forget my gorgeous little gnome. He always makes an appearance. He's my favourite. Kath, ha Kath has a, a gnome and he's got a stink eye. He gives you the evil eye. Hey, Kath. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually did a class. It's a foundation paper piecing one. I've done a review on him. So if you go and have a look through my review weekly, you'll come across him. Um, and I actually did it as a class with Kath Fleming um, last year, I think it was beginning of last year so yeah um it's and it's a free pattern too ladies so if you like him head on over um to our review weekly playlist and you'll find it there i did that review last year i think i did that yes you did yep. so it'll be there somewhere if i find the link tonight i will drop it underneath this video and then um yeah you'll be able to go and have a good it's really easy to make the only suggestion that the only tip that i can give you on that one is to watch those angles the angles will trip you up. So just oh. take it nice, nice, nice and easy. So yeah, it was quite um it was quite funny this afternoon. Um Beck was busy cutting out, tracing out and cutting out shapes, and I was busy over here um putting all this together. And um Mia is a lot better, thank you, Biz. She's much better now. She um well, I think that she just had a little bit of an upset tummy. I gave her some Nurofen and she bounced back pretty quick. And yeah, she did, didn't she? Yeah, and she did. Um, and then she came in at the beginning of the show and um, said hello to everybody and <laughs> said that she feels better now and she's tucked into bed fast asleep so she goes to bed fairly early because um, she's quite an active little girl. So, yeah, she's gone off to bed and she'll be right as rain tomorrow. She's still a little bit off tonight, but... Um, not as bad as she was this morning. When she come home this oh, she morning, she up when she seen Dustin. Yeah. As soon, oh yeah. She comes <laughs> as soon as she seen Dustin. Oh, Dustin's here. <laughs> oh, let's play. So yeah, she's um she's fine. She she was eating today. She was yeah she was absolutely fine. So yeah, all was good. Alrighty. So Paul's saying that she loves um cool as you go, and uh, Maggie was saying thank you both. We had a great night. Have a great weekend. Yes. Um, I've done Quilt As You Go, the French Braid Table Runner. 
I've always okay. wanted to do the French braid table runner. Um, I might bust that out and have a go at that. I've also got another quilt as you go thing too. Um, yeah, so I've got a another little thing in the. It's actually um, another person's design. So, but I'm just doing it an easier way. Okay. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. It, yeah. Because <laughs> when they did it, I'm like, yeah, no. Nah. I don't think you should do it that way. That takes too far too long. And we all know that I have the attention span of a gnat because I have so much in my UFO box. <laughs> Obviously, I've got the attention span of a gnat. Oh, bright sparkly things. Let's move on to that one. But yeah, so... That was um, yesterday. <laughs> there were things to look at. Yes, there was. There was plenty of things to look at. Yes. So we're going to call it a night because it's just gone 9 o'clock here and um, we're going to let you good people go on with your day or go back to sleep. Uh, whichever it may be. I think, Carol, you probably will go and have a cat nap and everybody else is going to get on with the rest of their day. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We hope that you've learnt something along the way and that you liked our shortcuts and the way we do things. Um, I am a rule breaker, so for those people that like to follow the rules, I'm probably not going to be the teacher for you because if I see a rule, I like to break it and find, <laughs> a, a, find an easier way to do it. Um, but it still comes out the same at the end of the day, so... Yeah, as long as the the final outcome yeah. is the same yeah. and it's correct. Yeah. If I was putting something into a show, then I wouldn't do the shortcuts. I would do it the traditional way. So if something called for a traditional way to do it and it was going to go into a quilt show, then I would most definitely abide by the rules. But when I'm just crafting for myself and having a great time and having a drink with Beck or, you know, having a cup of coffee and having a chin yeah. wag like we are tonight, basically, rules? What rules? Yeah. <laughs> just, um, yeah, I just like to get it done. So that's, there's, that's right, Paula. That's exactly right. There are no quilt police at my place. And if they do <laughs> come here, they can leave. There's the door. Off you go. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, so we're going to call it a night and head off and get our kid... Well, I've only got Nerali awake. I think Savannah's curled up and Brennan's already bed and Mia's asleep. So I don't have much to do, but Beth's got to go yeah. home. Go home now. <laughs> Which is just around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that far. I can walk. <laughs> but I'm not walking at <laughs> no, night time. It's too not, cold now. It's, yeah, it's too cold. <laughs> and, uh, so thank you very much again for joining us. We do hope that you enjoyed the evening and we look forward to seeing you all back here again on the 21st. And of course, we'll be here next Friday morning for our weekly roundup. Yes. And um, yeah, and also we'll see you around the socials. So have a great night or evening or morning for <laughs> wherever you may be. And we'll see you all again soon. It's a good night from me. And good night from me. Night, everybody. <laughs>